What's going on boys? Quinn69 here. How are you guys doing today? If you haven't guessed it already, this is going to be a patch 7.2.5 Retribution Paladin Guide. Uh, we're going to be going over pretty much exclusively PvE stuff. I'm going to teach you guys how to do a crap ton of damage, uh, how to get rank 1 logs, basically just how to be the man. So, you know, when we look at the DPS meter, you're going to be at the top. Um, well, you know, your rear paladin is kind of bad right now, so you're probably going to be, like, average, maybe even below average. Uh, unless lots of people... That's besides the point. That's besides the point. You're going to be at the top of your class, right? You're going to be doing the max damage that your character can possibly do. It's going to be a guide uh, pretty much focusing on some of the basic stuff, some of the intermediate stuff, and some of the more expert kind of uh, kind of nuances, so little, little tiny things you can do to try and squeeze out a little tiny, you know, 1%, 2 more DPS. Uh, so, buckle in your seatbelts, boys. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about talents, which ones you're going to use, and why. Uh, we'll get straight into it. I'm going to be quite blunt because this can take ages, and I don't want to draw it out. So, your first your first row, final verdict, period. Uh, increases the damage done if your Templar's verdict by 20%, single target, and the damage of your Divine Storm by 10% AoE. Uh, they both scale really well. It scales with all of your traits, talents, legendaries, etc., uh, you ha then have a choice between Execution Sentence or Consecration. Both uh, are just really bad. Consecration can be okay of this hectic AoE 24-7, uh, which is just not a single boss fight in all of TOS. Maybe you can justify it in M+. I never use it. Uh, I, find, I find it just a complete waste of time. Uh, execution Sentence is just, it just scales poorly. It can be uh, technically used in single target situations, but... And, you know, my character sims higher, and the majority of Paladins out there sim higher with Final Verdict. So just put Final Verdict on, and then just leave it. Maybe in 7.3, when some buffs come to the other talents, we might be changing it. But that's that's later on. Alright, now the second row. This can be a little bit confusing, because it depends on what legendaries you have. So, Fires of Justice, generally speaking, is the best choice, period. Uh, but, if you are... Uh, not using the legendary cloak, which is in a lot of cases, if you're using like two, you know, T20 with T19, uh, you don't have, you know, a slot for legendary cloak, then you're going to be using a seal. So, Fires of Justice, if you're using the cloak, just never take it off. Just permanently use Fires of Justice if you have legendary cloak. If you're not using legendary cloak, you can use zeal for single target damage in combination with a Blade of Wrath. Okay, guys? Basically, it does more damage... And you're going to get lots of Blade of Wrath procs. And it just increases your overall single target damage output. It sounds kind of weird. It's like you're using an AoE talent to do single target. A lot of people are confused by that. Basically, it's it's better, guys. Trust me. Uh, greater Judgment. I don't know why it's still in the game. Uh, Blizzard made it redundant when they added in the Judge, judge the Unworthy artifact trait. Um, it's actually completely useless. So you're never going to use that. So the TLDR, guys. If you're using Legendary Cloak, then Fires of Justice... Uh, and generally speaking, Fires of Justice is the best go-to talent. But if you don't have Legendary Cloak equipped and you're doing single target damage output, you're going to want to use Zeal in combination with Blade of Wrath. Okay, guys? Tier 3 talents. Uh, you, you, it's all utility. Really, generally speaking, Fist of Justice is the go-to talent for me. Uh, for M+, for raids, uh, having a local cooldown stun that's always up is pretty pretty damn handy. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, for Gul'dan, say, or say a fight where you need to actually use CC, uh, you can use Repentance. Uh, sometimes for M+, if you need to, you know, your group has no AoE interrupts or AoE stuns, you can go Blinding Light. Be careful, it removes dots, uh, so you basically can cripple your group's damage by using it. I would just suggest going Fist of Justice, uh, generically speaking, for most content. Alright, your next tier. You have a choice between Divine Hammer and Blade of Wrath. Uh, Virtuous Blade scales pretty bad, but, uh, you know, these other two talents, spot on. Uh, it's pretty obvious. If you're doing single target damage, Blade of Wrath. So if you're just one target, Blade of Wrath. If you're averaging more than one target, so two targets or more in any fight, okay, Divine Hammer is going to beat out Blade of Wrath by a decent amount. So just single target, Blade of Wrath, AoE, Divine Hammer. And remember, if you don't have the Legendary Cloak on, you're going to want to combo... Blade of Wrath for Zeal. Otherwise, if you do have Legendary Cloak on, you go Blade of Wrath to Fires of Justice. So you gotta, you got to kind of remember that. Uh, yeah. Also, I would like a little pro tip. If you really are confused about which talents you should be using on what boss, I would suggest going to warcraftlogs.com 
going through the boss sections and checking out what the uh, top damaging Rip Paladins have used. Uh, it's generally pretty obvious though. Uh, AoE fights, it's just going to be Divine Hammer, Fires of Justice, and on single target fights, Blade of Wrath Seal or Blade of Wrath, Fires of Justice. Also, uh, on that note, let me just say that one, one more thing, yeah? Uh, generally speaking, with Divine Hammer, um, it sounds kind of weird. So if, if there's a hectic AoE fight, say you're doing Mythic Plus, for example, right? A lot of people seem to make this big mistake, and they go Divine Hammer with Zeal. Uh, in very rare cases, depending on your stat setup, this can be okay. But in the majority of cases, you're actually going to get more AoE damage output by going Divine Hammer and the Fires of Justice, simply because you're going to have more Holy Power. That way you can cast more Divine Storms. Uh, also, if, you, you know, if you're using Divine Hammer and Zeal, you basically have uh, hardly any GCDs, and you're just sitting around doing nothing, and it feels really awkward. The next tier of talents is a utility tier. You have a choice between Jessica's Vengeance, Eye for an Eye, or Word of Glory. It is completely situational. So depending on what you're doing, uh, that will change. Generally speaking, I hang out in Eye for an Eye because it's applicable in the most situations, but I always change uh, depending on what boss I'm doing if I know that I can't benefit from it. Pretty much Eye for an Eye, in my opinion, is the most overpowered talent in this tier, simply because it's a one minute cooldown, it gives you 35% damage reduction over 10 seconds, and it also has like a little damage component. We don't really care about that though. It's it's more about just abusing the fact that you have like a really, really low cooldown shield wall mechanic, which works in a ton of bosses. Uh, so you just have to know when to use it. Pretty much just go into your dungeon journal and just look as to what, what type of damage uh, each attack is. And if you, you can see one is a physical damage uh, ability, then you can just abuse eye for an eye to just live through it. The next best talent, in my opinion, is Word of Glory. Uh, while co when comboed with the Legendary Belt plus Max Crusade stacks, uh, this this talent right here, it can be game changing. You can actually save your raid with this. Uh, for example, on Mythic Sisters of the Moon, uh, on my Rep Paladin, uh, I had you know there's there's basically this debuff which goes out in the raid and it puts an insane healing debuff on a bunch of members. What you can do is when your wings are up. Uh, you know, you've got Word of Glory usable, and the debuffs go out, you just press Word of Glory, like, twice, and you can heal for upwards of 10 million damage. I mean, I, I've healed for a crap. You can pretty much solo the debuffs as a Rep Paladin. Just insane burst AoE healing. There's tons of fights where healers need help, and it doesn't sound like much, but actually, uh, with, when you combo that with your belt, where you get 50% extra healing, and then with Crusade, which is giving you a healing multiplier... Um, you know, it's pretty crazy. Jessica's Vengeance is more of a uh, kind of solo survivability thing. Uh, but if you know anything about Red Paladins, you'll know that we have insane solo survivability. It's, it's, it's very hard to die as a Red Paladin, right? You should never really be the first person dying in your raid group ever. Um, therefore, I find, like, it's it's hard. I, I hardly ever see myself using Jessica's Vengeance. Uh, but you can uh, for basically boss fights where there's a debuff that goes out and does a lot of damage to that target to assist for healers if they're struggling. Uh, but yeah, I would suggest Eye for an Eye Water Glory in most fights. Your next tier is another utility tier. You have a choice between uh, Divine Intervention, uh, Divine Intervention, and Divine Intervention. Basically, for Mythic Rating and Heroic Rating, I guess, as well, more, more so for Mythic Rating, uh, Divine Intervention is overpowered. So it reduces the cooldown of your bubble by 20%, right? Okay, that's crazy. It means you can use bubble like more than once in the fight, for starters. In addition, any attack which would uh, kill you instead reduces you to 20% of your maximum health and triggers Divine Shield. So instead of dying, so like you could be dead, you could have stood in the fire and you could have died. Instead of dying, you don't die, right? You just save your group of B-Res. You, you just, on average, increase your damage on all of your attempts on that boss when you're progging. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's just it's a crazy OP talent, and I would highly suggest uh, using Divine Intervention uh, and pretty much... All, all all cases uh, there are some niche cases where like if you if you feel so confident that you're not gonna die and you're gonna be absolutely fine you can definitely go cavalier um, cavalier also does have a bit of a utility in TOS okay so right now it hasn't been hotfix yet and I don't know if it will be um, there's actually a few things that you can use cavalier to bug out and glitch it's kind of like a it's, it's basically an exploit uh, but right now, on uh, the boss mistress Sissy Zane, uh, I know I'm butchering her name. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's, it's the Naga, it's the Naga Ho in TOS. She puts a Murloc debuff on you, right? 
Um, it's, a, it's a really hard thing to heal through uh, for your team. And the more debuffs that go out, it basically wipes your raid. Uh, Paladins, you can just hop on your horse. You just press Cavalier and it drops the Murloc. Um, definitely not, it's not supposed to do that. But for whatever reason, Cavalier has that effect on a lot of things. Like, uh, and I, I have a Charizard, you get Arcane Bomb, you press Cavalier, it, it literally dispels you. I don't know why it doesn't say that in the tooltip. It's not meant to do that. Uh, but for whatever reason, the act of mounting up just gets rid of a lot of mechanics. It's kind of dodgy, uh, but you can definitely benefit from, uh, you know, having extra charge of steed. But generally speaking, uh, in 99% of cases, I am specced into Divine Intervention uh, and then Cavalier. Judgment of the Light, the healing output of that thing is just trash. Uh, I, I would, it's just not worth it, right? You could either choose to give your group an extra battle res, basically, or, you know, improve your utility and your mobility by a ton. Or you could choose to, you know, increase your healing output by some tiny, minor amount. And it's just not worth it, in my opinion, until they buff that talent. To be fair, I don't feel like that, that really fits in to this. I'd, I'd like to see Blizzard just remove that and give us something uh, more interesting. And the final tier, you have three choices. We don't really have three choices. You have one choice. It's Crusade. In PvE, uh, Crusade gives you an immense amount of damage. Uh, it's I think uh, Blizzard actually had it. There was a blue post basically saying... That Crusade is the most busted talent in the game right now. They like to see talents giving you like a 2 to 5% damage increase. Whereas Crusade is giving you some insane amount. It's like way more than any other talent. Um, and for that reason, you just put Crusade on for PvE. And you just never take it off. Yeah, you just want to do max You just want to do max DPS. So you use Crusade. That's how you get the rank 1 logs. Holy Wrath is a dead meme. Uh, people don't even use it in PvP anymore. Uh, people don't use it in PvE. Uh, it's basically it's just no one uses it blizzard needs to just delete it and make a new one because uh, the fact is if they buff it it becomes op and pvp uh and it doesn't really have a place in pve uh divine purpose okay so yes com in comparison to crusade divine purpose sucks uh but you can actually get divine purpose now uh off this new legendary called soul of the high lord it's not really the best it's not legendary but it's not a bad one i've been using it a lot uh, due to its very high variance. So obviously Divine Purpose has a like an RNG factor to it. If you get lucky, you do a ton of damage. If you get unlucky, you do no damage. On average, it's like it performs slightly worse than most of the generic legendaries that we use, like Belt, Cloak, uh, Linerance Ring, etc. Uh, pretty much, it, it can be kind of fun though, if you want to just go, you know, play the lottery of DPS, you get lucky, and you get rank 1 logs. Uh, I've been using it, and it's pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, that is it, guys. That is the talents. Now let's talk about artifact weapons. Uh, we'll quickly go over the path you want to take once you unlock the empowered traits. Uh, so that's once you've got the standard traits and then you go to the Broken Shore and you unlock the new ones. We'll quickly go over that. Uh, so you just want to go Ferocity of the Silver Hands down to Righteous Verdict to Blessing of the Ashbringer to Judge the Unworthy. I feel like this is the best initial choice uh, simply because you get a ton of uh, utility from Judge the Unworthy. Uh, then from there, you just want to get your increased wings duration, OP, okay? Then you're going to go deliver the justice, because you get uh, bladed justice damage with a T20 set that scales really, really well. And then from there, it's just really uh, righteous blade, so either AoE damage or single target. I'd probably say righteous blade, then might of the Templar. And then it's really a choice between uh, sharpened edge and judge. Uh, judge slightly better in AoE, sharpened edge slightly better. And single target i mean really guys uh, it's like it's a fraction of a percent different in terms of damage output and then in terms of utility you just go protector of the ash and blade and then uh deflection and then embrace the light and then you just start fucking slamming concordance uh you're never going to get that high you'll probably get to about by the end of 725 i'd say if you're no lifing pretty hard maybe level 65 maybe if you if you're lucky we calculated it, it was going to be like months if you're grinding like eight hours a day, AP. Okay, guys, AP in 2017. All right, that that I I, I hope you guys already have concordance. This this point in the guide is pretty. It's just for the new guys who are re-rolling to red paladins. Now, for the kind of slightly confusing part, this is the artifact relics. You have two holy slots and a fire slot. It's pretty simple. There's pretty much three relics that I would suggest using as a red pally. Um, this is on the silverhand.net. It's a really good resource. Um, and they basically weight the various relics you can use. So Wrath of the Ashbringer, that is your uh, increased wings duration 
Ideally, you're going to have, because uh, in Tomb of Sargeras, there is a Wrath of the Ashplinger Relic of the Demonic Inquisition. It's a fire one. So you want to have that in your fire slot. Uh, and then the other two holy slots should have two more Wrath of Ashbringers if you, you know, in the ideal world. The best way to get holy relics, uh, you know, high eye level holy relics, I would be saying is is, is farming Black Rock Holds. Uh, it drops a, you know, a holy version of Wrath of the Ashbringer. So I would farm, you know, 15 if you can. Black Rock Holds, try and get that. If you can't do 15s, also consider doing Night Hold. Um, you know, Chromatic Anomaly. So you can actually pug Mythic Nighthold now. If you can't pug Mythic, try to do Heroic. You can kill Chromatic Anomaly, hope he drops that. Uh, otherwise, really, the other choices you have, in my opinion, I'd say Righteous Blade is kind of questionable. Uh, Righteous Blade, it performs really well in AoE. It's one of the best relics. It, and, you know, it would actually outperform uh, Runa Pro and Wrath of the Ashbringer at a certain point if there was enough targets, right? Uh, but that's situational. And Tomb of Sargeras, you got a lot of single target, uh, you know, where you want kind of like consistent single target damage and uh both of these relics here deliver the justice and righteous, righteous verdict work in single target and aoe okay deliver the justice and righteous verdict those are they effectively are the same thing they just work slightly differently that is your um you know your holy power spinning abilities increase to damage your next divine hammer or blade of wrath and it's the exact same thing over here increase the damage of divine hammer they they, they both weight exactly the same so in reality, I'm going to expect to see most Paladins having the, you know, Raffi Ashbringer Relic in the Fire Slot, and then probably, because Tomb of Sargeras doesn't drop holy versions of Raffi Ashbringer, you're probably going to see most Paladins running around with uh, either the, you know, Deliver the Justice Relics or uh, Righteous Verdict Relics, because they both drop from TOS. So you can get your hands on those pretty easily. Uh, but if you try hard, farm Black or Cold, try get triple, you know, Trifecta Raffi Ashbringers, uh, because they're really OP. When you get to your third relic of Raffi Ashbringer, it's like insane because you can get two, uh, you know, Wake of Ashes out. Your wings last for an absurd amount of time. It's it's pretty crazy, I'll be honest. Uh, but yeah, that's really all there is to it for the Artifact Weapon. Um, if you want a link to this, uh, I will put the link to this website here. So just in case you want like a reference to this website here, I will link this down below. This shows you the various, you know, the iron level equivalents, uh, the percentages you know, but all you really need to remember, guys, is Wrath of the Ashbringer is king. F then follow closely by your both both your uh, Divine Hammer or, you know, Blade of Wrath relics. And then if, in AoE, Righteous Blades, that, that's that's your uh, Divine Storm trait. So, uh, you know, that can be very viable if you're doing, if you're optimizing around AoE fights. Considering, uh, you know, that there is quite, I mean, for, like Kill Jaden, some of the really, really hard bosses in Tomb of Sigaris, there might be a decent amount of AoE. We don't know yet. Um, so that might be, uh, you know, an option. But anyway, guys, that is the artifact weapons for you. All right, boys, now let's talk about the rotation. This is basically the core fundamental stuff, uh, like how to do damage as a red play, the do's, the don'ts, uh, little tips and tricks I can give you guys for free uh, to hopefully increase your damage output. Pretty much as a red play. Uh, the biggest thing, the one rule that you need to live by, okay, that is, do not spend holy power if the target does not have judgment. Okay, you, you can pretty much swear by that. Okay, if you do that, straight away your damage is going to be better than 50% of the red paladins out there. Because a lot of red paladins seem to be, I don't know, they're a little bit slow on the head. Uh, really, I don't know, you just, it's, it's like, you see a red paladin, he's doing absolutely no damage, and you're like, how? What is he? What? And then you, and you see their judgment up time, and it's absolutely horrible. And then you realize, oh, that's why he doesn't know the basic mechanics of a red pally. So if you don't know how that works, basically you have mastery. Uh, the way your mastery works is uh, when you judge a target, they take like 30% plus, depending on your mastery, more damage from your spenders. There is an exception. Okay, so say you judge a target, and it happens to die shortly after, and your judge isn't coming out for like five seconds. You're at five holy power and both your Blade of Wrath and your Zeal, or your Crusader Strike, etc., is all ready to go, then you may spend your Holy Power, okay? It, it, it's not always, okay, in, the, in, in like on a dummy, in the dream scenario, in the perfect setup, you will never spend Holy Power if they don't have Judge, but sometimes if your Judge is on cooldown for five plus seconds, and you, you've got all this Holy Power, and all your other abilities are up, okay, then just spend, it, it, take one for the team, it feels really bad, because you'll hit like a wet noodle, uh, but it's better than just sitting there 
and just looking at the target like some sort of idiot uh, and doing absolutely nothing, right? So yeah. Now, the other thing is, the, the other really, really big rule is, do not overcap holy power. Okay, what I mean by this is, um, pretty much if you've, if you've got uh, five holy power and you don't use Crusader Strike, you use Templar's Verdict or Divine Storm. If you've got three holy power and using the T20 set, do not use Blade of Wrath. Because you're going to overgenerate and you're going to delete holy power. Every time you delete a holy power, okay, that means you're just deleting DPS. That's potential. That's like you just, if you delete one holy power, that's one third of a Templar's Verdict, which you just wasted. So never waste holy power. There is also uh, exceptions, obviously. Uh, for example, I, I believe uh, you'll even see in this video here, I've got some footage. Uh, I actually delete one holy power with a wake of ashes. If your wake of ashes is usable and everything else is on cooldown and you've got one holy power, it is absolutely acceptable to use a wake of ashes and just delete one holy power. I mean, you still get four, it's all good, and it's not going to be the end of the world. It's better that you get that on cooldown because it's actually uh, damage per button pressed one of your highest damaging uh, abilities in the game. So you need to get that shit on cooldown ASAP. But also, you don't want to press it if you're going to waste two holy power. Or you're going to waste three. Like, do not use Wake of Ashes if you've got three or four holy power. Try and be zero, ideally. Like, if you've got two holy power, just try and do one Crusader Strike, use a Templar's Verdict, and then uh, then Wake. You know, you can delay it by a few seconds if, if, to min-max, but don't sit on your Wake of Ashes for ages. Um basically just doing nothing right that's so, so you've so you've got to get it on cooldown as soon as possible other than those two fundamental rules uh, you have a very basic priority and that that real basic priority is basically just if, as long as the target is judged and you're not overcapping holy power just uh, prioritize using blade of wrath or divine hammer to generate first and then either zeal or crusader strike to generate if you can't do either of those um, and, and you haven't got enough holy power to spend, you just sit there and you basically wait, or you can just reapply judge. You don't necessarily, this is, this is one of the weird things with judge. Uh, you don't need, you don't need to judge right before you spend every time. If you have a free GCD, judge is usable. Just get it on cooldown, get the debuff up, and then you're ready to go. So that way your GCDs are like more free. So you'll see me judging sometimes, even at zero holy power, I've got nothing else to press. I'm just going to press judge, get that thing on cooldown, so then I'm ready to go and ready to spend. Because really, you might have like, it might cause like a, you know, you might just sit there for like half a second, um, but you'll gain that back by, you know, the, that, the second of GCD that you've saved by using it preemptively, if that makes sense. Um, it's probably kind of confusing. What I'm saying is, this is a very basic priority, guys. That's just use Blade of Wrath or Divine Hammer first, and uh, <laughs> if you can't use that, then use Crusader Strike or uh, Zeal, and then just spend your holy power and just rinse and repeat. If there is more than two targets, okay, so right here, I've been talking about single target damage, right? If there is more than two targets in any situation, under the assumption that they both have judge up, so you put judge on both the targets, then use Divine Storm. Because Divine Storm almost is as hard as Sentinel's Verdict, uh, except it, you know, hits multiple targets. So it's, it's OP like that. Like, pretty much, a lot of people ask me, because uh, I've seen it in guides, like, li like literal Icy Veins guides. They say like three plus targets with Divine Storm which is just outright wrong. I hope they fix that. Uh, you know, I've seen it on, okay, never use this website, Noxic. They just tell you the complete wrongs. That, you know, they say three plus, four plus targets. It is two targets. If there is two targets, you Divine Storm. If there is one target, you Templar's Verdict. Obviously, if there's a priority target that needs to die, don't just be greedy and pad. <coughs> I would never do that ever. Uh, and just, you, yeah, do what you got to do for the team. Uh, but really, it is that simple. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, I'm going to get into the burst rotation. This is the thing, this is like the more kind of intermediate to advanced uh, section. Because, uh, yeah, it's, bursting is the hardest thing about a Red Paladin, in my opinion. Uh, it's very fast. So the damage you deal, you know, while while your wings are up, you know, and uh, it is, is like the complete majority of damage. You, you deal like three or four times as much damage during wings than outside of wings. So you need to make sure during wings every single gcd is perfect and while you've got heroism and while you're haste cap from crusade that's not easy because your cooldowns are like this like bang 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 so you have to be just on the point to do the most once you've been doing it for you know months and months you'll get used to it but anyway let's 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 talk about the burst rotation i'm going to slow this down and we'll look at it uh, step by step exactly what we're doing all right this is my opener 
Uh, this is what I've used to get multiple rank one in the world Red Paladin Warcraft logs. And I think it's pretty much the same, if not very similar to what the other big deck DPS are doing. At the five second mark, if you have Divine Hammer, precast it now. At the two to three second mark, I like to precast Cavalier to get to the boss. Obviously, if you're going to need Cavalier, don't do that. If you're going to need it in the fight, hold on to it, obviously. At the one second mark, Pre-Pot. So you, I'm going to be using an old War Potion because I'm going to have 100% uptime. Then you're going to use uh, Blade of Wrath, and then you're going to Judge. Then you're going to pop Wings and simultaneously Templar's Verdict. Then you're going to use Wake of Ashes to put yourself back at 5 Holy Power. Then you're going to Templar's Verdict because you're at 5. I'm also using my on use Trinket at the same time because I've got another on use Trinket that I need to use. Now I'm at 2 Holy Power, so I'm going to use another Blade of Wrath to go back to 5. going to spend again. Again, I'm down to 2 again. I, the only thing I can do is I can Zeal, and I'm back to 3. The second I'm at 3, I need to spend again. I'm getting really unlucky Divine Purpose Procs right now. I am using the Soul of the High Warlord. Again, I'm just going to generate with Zeal. I'm at 2 Holy Power, so I can either throw a Judge or use a uh, Blade of Wrath. So I did both. I'm at 5 Holy Power. I'm going to spend again. And the same thing. Back to 2. Going to Zeal again. And hopefully we get some procs. Now my weaker is telling me I'm at um, 20 seconds till Wings is going to fall off. Use your next unused trinket. So that's what I'm doing. Using my unused trinket. I'm at 4 holy power. Going to spend again. And it's pretty much your standard rotation. Just really, really, really fast from this point on. And I'm getting extremely unlucky with these procs. Now, uh, Judge just fell off again. I'm at 2 holy power. I'm going to use that to get to 3. I'm going to reapply Judge. I'm going to spend again. Got my first Divine Purpose proc. I'm going to spend that straight away. I'm trying to get as many... Div Another Divine Purpose proc. I'm going to spend that again. Another Divine Purpose proc. I'm going to spend that again. Another Divine Purpose proc. I'm going to spend that again. See, now that is what we're talking about. See that, dudes? I just pre I just cast Timbler's Verdict five times in a row. Another Divine Purpose proc. And another one. And another one. And this is pretty much Rip Pally Burst. It's really fun. Um, it's insanely fast. Remember, this is slowed down to... I've slowed it down by five times, so this it looks it looks uh, kind of simple, but when it's happening at full speed, it can be a little bit intimidating. And now, as we come up to the last five seconds of wings, I, I think I am gonna try get my wake of ashes out. Maybe I get it. I'm not sure. I only have one avenging wrath relic. If you have two or three avenging wrath relics, it's very easy to get your wake within the the period here. Ah, uh, no, it looks like I'm not gonna get it. So I'm going to spend them at 2 Holy Power. It would be a waste to wake here. So I'm going to, I'm just going to do it standard. I'm going to reapply Judge. That was, oh my god, that was so close. I'm such a rebel, dude. I'm such a rebel. Now I'm going to wake. You're going to remember, wake does not affect my mastery. So you just use that the second you can. The second you're at 0 Holy Power. And then again, just going to keep using my Divine Purpose procs. And that is the Burst Opener. Um, I don't know if that was just basically me spurging out. I don't know if you actually learned anything from that. Um, really? It's basically, I mean... Just do your normal rotation just really, really, really fast and try not to mess it up. Um, but I'm just showing you guys, once you've kind of done it a, like a bunch of times, um, you're just going to get used to reactively pressing your buttons really, really fast. Uh, and, and, and you'll just get better and better. I would suggest practicing this if you're if you're making mistakes. Uh, really, to sit, sit down at the dummies and just keep opening on a target with Crusade. If you have uh, drums to give yourself bloodlust, I would do that as well. I've got a shaman for the real lust. And uh, yeah, just sit down and practice it. If you have any questions about the rotation, if you're confused about anything, uh, please do contact me on my stream. That's twitch.tv, Quinn69. Or go to my Twitch app server and ask him wow questions if it's a very specific question. And I will get back to you there 100%. Um, but otherwise, that's really it. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. That is stats, gear, and best and slot items and legendaries. I'm going to try to do this all in one take, so let's do it. For starters, stats for Red Paladins. It's pretty basic, honestly. You, you, you can use SimCraft. Okay, so I have a guide for that up here. You can use SimCraft to work out exactly. If there's two purple items, and you're not sure which one's quite better, you can sim it to find out, and you can get the exact answer uh, to your question. Otherwise, use this rule set, and it will generally, it will be 9 times out of 10 correct. Okay, the highest item level item, which does not have mastery. Sounds It sounds pretty basic, but that's honestly, like, it, when it comes to repelling and gearing, uh, that's pretty much it. The highest item level item you can possibly equip 
which does not have mastery. If I was to prioritize the stats, if I was to put values on them, like generically speaking, I would probably say your best stat is strength, obviously, so R level, then followed by haste, then crit and burst, like a tiny bit under haste. If not, you know, depending on how much haste you have, it could actually be better. Uh, but you'd have to sim that to find out. Some crap guys up there, boys, remember. And then mastery at the bottom. Mastery actually isn't that far behind, hence why I level normally beats out and everything. It's just when you're trying to min-max your gear, you don't really want too much mastery gear because it's generally speaking a bad thing. I can't really talk. I'm at 27%. That's pretty bad. That's actually quite a lot of mastery, team. You don't want that. Now, if you if you don't want to use some craft, just follow those rules and you'll be pretty much good to go for uh, re itemization. Uh, when it comes to the new tier 20, um, I am not using the optimal setup. If, if I could have the all, any pieces I wanted, I'd be using tier 20 gloves. I'd be using tier 20 uh, pants, which I don't have. I'd be using tier 20 chest, and I'd be using tier 20 shoulders. And then I'd be filling out the rest of my gear uh, with items that are just the highest eye level possible, which does not have master on it. That, that's, that's how I'd be gearing in the, in the ideal situation. Um, now, if you are lucky enough, okay, if you are lucky enough to have some tier 19 gear, that is the gear from Nighthold, you can run four piece, two piece. That is what the majority of Red Paladins are running right now, because the majority of them, it's the, it's the best, because they haven't really got super, super high 955 Titanforge gear. Uh, and this will, I mean, if, technically speaking, if you could somehow get two pieces of the tier 19 set, preferably um, you get T19 shoulders and helmet if you could and you can get both of those items and 955 that would be the ultimate setup right you would use two pieces of tier 19 and four pieces of tier 20 uh which is just it's just pretty much impossible though right i i've got i've been doing mythic night hole for i don't know how many times now i've killed gildan like almost 20 times and i'm still running on 19 as my best pieces i have i plan on running my ultimate setup is not going to be uh, i'm just going to be running tier 20 four piece and then i'll be running a generic item in my helmet i've got already got a 941 just sitting there ready to go so my ideal setup when it comes to tier gear um for me specifically because i don't plan on just randomly winning the lottery and getting uh you know some 955 gear i plan on running a boe helmet i plan on running a legendary cloak with a uh with just a you know I'm going to be running here just any generic ring. Do I have a really good I think I have a pretty good one here, actually. Just any generic ring. I'll be running Legendary Cloak, and I'll be running Belt. And then I'll have, um, I, I, don't, I don't have it yet, but I'll be having the Tier 20 shoulders there, and then I'll have my Tier 20 pants on. Like, yeah, so I'll have, so I have, I would have four piece if I had those shoulder pads. That's what I would suggest most of you guys go for. This, generally speaking, this is what everyone is going to be moving towards in the future once everyone starts to get all the good, you know, really, really high Titan Forge gear, because you will, because you can get like 910 base eye level gear from Mythic Plus. You can get like 930, uh, 935 eye level, I believe. From, from, I mean, it's crazy the gear you can get now. Uh, absolutely insane. I mean, the gear that drops off uh, Mythic Kill Jaden, I mean, it's going to be quite hard to get this. It's dropping at base eye level 940, right? So the chances of you ever getting T19 at that kind of eye level, it's just not very likely. So as I said, you want pro this is probably the ultimate setup which I would suggest running, which would be uh, so tier 20 gloves, tier 20 uh, pants, tier 20 shoulders, and tier 20 chest with legendary belt and legendary cloak. If you are going to run the tier 19, okay, two piece and tier 20 four piece setup, then um, please go ahead and do so, a and that means you can either use I would these are my this is what I would suggest you use. Legendary belt is locked in. You just never take that off. It's OP. You can either go. I prefer Soul of the High Lord. Uh, it does underperform on average compared to the uh, Linda and Fury Unleashed. Uh, but uh, I would. I don't know. I find that this is very fun, and it's it's if you get lucky, it's insane DPS. Um, but if you're a tryhard and you just want to be consistently good, uh, run. I'd run this legendary setup. Uh, and really, there's Red Pell and Legendaries. They're all pretty good nowadays. Um, but ideally, the, the, uh, this is the only setups I would suggest. Either belt and this ring, or belt and that ring with tier 24 piece, tier 19 two piece. Or if you're going to do what I'm going to do, and I think what the majority of paladins will end up doing, you're going to end up going tier 24 piece with legendary cloak and then miscellaneous high eye level items um, sporadically on your character. So that means you basically the way the way that I see it is if you're running tier um, 
tier 24 piece, it means you can, you're free to run Mythic Plus. It opens up a lot of slots, and it means you can fill those uh, items with some really, really high level pieces. And if you're really rich, okay, this tier is pretty crazy because uh, there's, there's BOE items that are best. Uh, so, like, for example, um, Tumus Tigeris. I don't have them there. God damn it. Uh, if you, it, for, for Paladin specifically, there is, I believe, Haste Crit Boots, which you can buy off the auction house, which are going to go all the way up to 955 uh, for millions and millions of gold. But, I mean, if you're rich, you can buy it. I'm going to try to get rich so I can buy it. And there's also a Crit Burst Helmet, which you can also buy off the auction house, um, which means you can get pretty much two slots really high eye level if you're rich. So to, to do a quick TLDI recap, quick TLDI recap, legendaries I would suggest, uh, belt and cloak with T24 piece and then miscellaneous other pieces, or belt and either or High Lord or Linderin's Fury Unleashed, this one being the more consistent option, this one being the more kind of RNGs spec um, with T24 uh, piece and T19 two piece. When it comes to trinkets, okay guys, when it comes to trinkets, for a, uh, for a Rip Paladin, for TOS, I would suggest this this one right here, boys. Vile of Ceaseless Toxins. This one here is viable on any of the bosses. It's really, really good, really, really strong, it, and, it, and it just works really well. And if you if you can master it, uh, there's a bunch of Weekoras out for this trinket. I would suggest getting a Weekora. Uh, you know, just type in like Vile of Ceaseless Toxins Weekora. Uh, I have Weekoras on my, my setup. You can ask me on stream to get that. Um, this trinket right here, I would say, is consistently a really good one to have equipped. But I would say the best trinket you can get for a Rep Pally right now in the game, it, ironically, I do not have it. It is called Infernal Cinders. Uh, especially, it's it's absolutely insane if there's more people in your party that have it. Uh, so your melee attacks have a chance to deal an additional 145k fire damage. The crit strike chance uh, is increased. Uh, what the crit strike chance is, is, and the damage of this is increased by 10% for each ally within 10 yards. I'm sorry, I've got, I'm a bit of a spurg. It's really hard to read stuff. Uh, TLDRs, guys. Cinders is going to be permabus. Like, by far, your best in slot trinket. It's going to give you... I've seen it do, like, 10% of Red Paladin's damage, right? 10%. It's crazy. Uh, and it's, obviously, the more people in your raid group that are using it, the better. And then I would say an all-around good choice is Vile of Ceaseless Toxins. Really, really strong choice. Um... Spectre of Betrayal. Okay, so if you're using this on cooldown, it's effectively like a Vile of Ceaseless Toxins, except better. But it has this horrible thing where when you use it, the way it works, you use it and it spawns a little thing. And basically the boss that you're finding can't move. Uh, which is basically no bosses in all of Tumas Hygeris. So all the bosses, I mean, maybe like Demonic Inquisition, maybe Fallen Avatar, but not really. Not not really, let's be honest here, because he's he moving around the last phase. It's, it's pretty much... On, on a dummy, that thing, this trinket's insane, but in reality, it, it doesn't perform that well. That's why I would suggest using this one over that, because, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's, like, slightly worse if you're attacking a dummy, which doesn't move, but you don't have that movement requirement. So, consistently across the board, it's probably better. So, I would say Cinders and Vile of Ceaseless Toxins. And now, one little kind of wild card trinket that a lot of people don't even know is really good. I don't know why, because it's just the best thing ever. It's my favorite trinket and all of... I mean, to be fair, the entire expansion, this trinket specifically, has been my favorite. Um, and that is Umbral Moonglaves. Uh, it sounds really fucking weird. Um, but uh, basically what it does is you use it and it does a crap ton of AoE damage. So on any single AoE boss fight, this trinket is best. And, and then you'll be using this ideally with Cinders. You'd have Cinders in this slot and then move Glaives in that slot. And then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like because it looks insane. Let me let me get some AoE here. Um, okay, so we got like two two guys here. So pretty much what you do is you get on the target, pop all your cooldowns. I, think, I don't know what kind of weird set, setup I'm running right now. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just getting my stacks up. So you get your stacks up to 15, obviously. This applies for Cinders, uh, I mean, for Vile as well. You want to be at 15 stacks and using it. I set up a weak aura. So you can see here, I'm at 15 stacks Crusade. And I'm going to use it here, team. I'm going to press this. Boom. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Obviously, the numbers are completely out of whack because um, it's <laughs> it's like low eye level uh, dummies. But you can see there, the percentages still hold true. That, that thing just did 16% initial damage and then also another 6% on top of that. In, in terms of damage output. And it's crazy. 
in uh, dungeons, like Mythic Plus, um, this thing pulls like almost 10% of my damage. Uh, in boss fights, like Kill Jaden, 10% of my damage. Um, it, it's basically like Cinder's, except uh, the AoE version. Uh, but yeah, I would not use it on a single target fight. But otherwise, guys, uh, that's really it, man. That's that's the gear. That's the stats. As I said, if you want to be a pro, use SimCraft to really min-max. Um, you see me doing it all the time on stream. I have already released a guide, um, you know. But outside of that, boys, that's really it. Congratulations. If you're still watching this video, uh, you're officially the man, all right? You're officially... You've been watching for like 40 fucking... I, I don't know. This, this video's gone for way too long. Uh, making YouTube content is really hard for me. And, uh, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. So thank you guys so much for chilling out and watching to this point. Uh, you guys are champions. You guys are champions. Uh, if you haven't already, let's be honest here, anyone who's watching the guide, this, you guys are pretty hard out. You probably already are. If you haven't already, definitely check out my live stream. That's twitch.tv forward slash quinn69. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and join my Twitch app. Okay, so I'll link it down below. So my little Twitch, especially like Discord, but like Twitch version. Uh, and then ask any questions about rep plays you have in the wow questions section that way i'll be able to see it okay guys but otherwise thank you guys so much for watching please uh feel free to share like uh whatever the hell you want to do with the video um because you know i put a lot of effort into this taint and uh you know hopefully it'll be a little bit more motivating to make make more content i really do want to make more youtube content it's just it requires a lot of time and a lot of effort otherwise thank you guys so much for watching peace the hell out and I will see you guys later.